Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to start part 7 of FlexPress, and we're going to teach you how to use a label function. But first, let's do a little bit of housekeeping to our application. Let's run it to remind us what we had done last time. And last time we had added a label and a list. And we actually have two labels here, the title and the date. And they're actually in a H box. And then the, that is in conjunction with a V box. And I think organized in that way. And so what we're going to do now is a little bit of housekeeping, spread things out a little bit, change some of the organization of the containers, and add a label function. So let's do that now. I'm going to double click this to spread it out a little bit. Okay, and let's go ahead and add a 1024 by 768. And let's just stretch this out a little bit. And move this over here. So it's just a little bit of aesthetics, and we'll do a lot more of this as we proceed with the uh, lectures. And let's stretch out that text box, that canvas, and then the text box. And now let's run it again. So now let's bold our labels and make them a little bit larger. So hit bold. And uh, I'm in the flex properties view here and make them a little bit larger. Let's bring them up to 16. And the other one will bold it. Control Z. Let's make that 14. And the other one, we'll go ahead and bold it and make it 14 as well. Cool. Now, i got to be honest with you, I don't really like working with H-Box and V-Boxes that much. I really like to have full control over where I position things on the screen. So let's go ahead and put this all into a canvas. So let's go back to Source View. And you can see I have my H-Box and my V-Box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and put a canvas in here instead. It just is really whatever your preference is. A lot of people just love H-Box and V-Boxes. Uh, I just like to have control, absolute control for where things are positioned on the screen. So it's a little bit different for me. You may find uh, H-Box and V-Boxes do you great. I'm just taking out all the H-Box and V-Boxes that are in here. And I'm going to highlight this and bring my canvas uh, completion tag down below. And now I'm going to go back to the design view. And we can see everything's lying over everything else, but I'm going to just move these around so I can position these on the screen as I where I want them. So let's shrink this text box just a little bit. And we're going to move it down. And then I'm going to move uh, my date box over here on the other side. And just make it a little bit lower. <laughs> And now let's run this and see what it looks like. Okay, and this is what we have so far. And that, for me, looks is okay. So we're doing all right. And what I want to do now is work with this list box a little bit. I want to add a label function. Now what a label function is going to enable me to do is create a custom function to bring different items into this list box. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to use the label function to actually create my own function return to bring different things into this list box. So let's get rid of this and start doing that. Let's go to source code. And what I'm going to do is go to the um, list box. Here it is right here. And I'm going to actually just start again. So I'm going to highlight this list box. And I'm going to right click and go to source and just go toggle block content and that just blocks it off. It's there so I can still see it and reference it but I actually am going to uh, it won't uh, it'll ignore it as it executes the code. Let's go ahead and copy this. And if you have problems copying sometimes uh, the scroller kind of moves wacky and flex. Just go ahead and click here go to the uh, portion you want to copy and then shift click and right click copy. And we're going to paste that 
And now instead of a label field, I'm going to use in this list box, instead of a label field, I'm going to use a label function. And I'm just going to use a name and we'll call it my label function. I mean, not being very creative here, but that's okay. And it's going to take a little bit of for different form than uh, what we've done before. Typically, when we call functions, we see there's usually like a, a parenthesis and there's a function up there. But this is just going to be a, my label function, the name of the function without any of the parenthesis or typically what you see, any type of, uh, you know, um, element inside the, the parenthesis, just, just the name of the function. And that's the way it's been created. It's always like this. It's just that form that it follows. And so we're going to come up here into our action scripting and we're going to create that function. And we'll just create a private function. And we'll just use that same name. And we're going to actually bring in an item which is an object. And we're going to return not void this time but a string and put in your curly brackets. And I'm going to just write a return function. And what I'm going to return is the item dot now whatever I want to return. So I'm going to say let's make it the title. So we go down here and let's grab that title name. So we see here we have a post title. Let's grab that name. And I'm going to concatenate this with a string, and so we're going to put a parenthesis here, put a space and a, a parenthesis, and let's uh, concatenate that with another value of item, item, and let's bring in now the date. So let's go down here and grab that as well from the second label, post modified. And let's go ahead and put our uh, closing parenthesis. So we use plus sign to concatenate a string and put quotes in there and our closing parenthesis and then a semicolon. And let's run this and see what we get. First let's save to see if there's any errors. Didn't get any errors, so let's run it and see what we get. And now if you look at my list box, I actually have the label, the title, and the date. So I actually use that label function to create a custom function to bring in other things into the list box, and that's pretty cool, and we'll use that in upcoming events. The next thing we're going to do in this series is actually spice this up a little bit by adding to our database and bringing in a thumbnail image.